what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel if you guys don't remember this is the truck that we replaced the axle fluid on this 17 250 and it has a 10 and a half sterling in it but the pinion seal is leaking I'm gonna show you guys how to replace this the way I am doing it so that you can take care of your rear axle leak and get it back on the road all right guys let's do it Thanks so much for coming back. This particular truck is a 2017 and it has a leak from the pinion seal. One of the first things we're gonna do is get this drive shaft out. Now this is a one piece aluminum drive shaft and it is gonna require us to put it in neutral. We're gonna take our trim tool, we're gonna pop this linkage off and we're gonna go two clicks forward. Once we get the drive shaft out, you're gonna see the big nut holding the pinion flange on and that is the important thing that we're gonna talk about so that we can index and keep the same spot that it came off of. We're gonna mark that on each side. We're gonna do the nut, we're gonna do the flange, we're gonna do the housing and everything's gonna go back on the exact same way so we do not have to do that rotational torque measurement to see if it is on too far or not too far. Pop off the linkage, just like this. No big deal. Right now it's in park. We got reverse and then neutral. Now we can go back here. Now we're able to spin our drive shaft so we can get to all the fasteners. This is gonna be a 3-8 drive, 12-12, 12.12 millimeter. Remember before you take any drive shaft off, Go ahead and mark the drive shaft to the flange. We want to put that back in the exact same spot. I'm going to go ahead and rip these out. And the last one. This should not fall is probably going to be rusted to the plan. Okay. Yeah, she's rusted. If it wasn't, you know, be prepared to support that drive shaft. So what you can do, sometimes you can hit it with a hammer carefully, or other times you can use a pry bar to break that bond between the drive shaft and the flange. Just kind of get it up underneath here between the U-joint and do something, something kind of like that. Okay. This drive shaft is a slip yoke into the transfer case, and you're just going to pull the drive shaft right out. It doesn't matter the orientation it goes to in the transfer case, they're all spline the same. Some of the bigger trucks have a key drive shaft, so it would only go on one way. Here's the pinion nut. This is what we have to take off in order to get this off. Once we get this off, then we can get the seal out and install it correctly. All right, I've marked the pinion. That line is going to be what needs to be lined up when we're tightening it. So right now we're going to rip this nut off. You're going to rip this nut off, preferably with air. And then we're going to use a puller to pull off the flange out of the axle housing. All right, we got a 1 and 5 eighths three-quarter drive socket and a half inch to three-quarter reducer. We're going to half inch this nut right off. Pinion nut is off. All right guys, so I have installed just a generic puller using two drive shaft bolts a washer and this is pushing against the actual shaft of the pinion down in here. I'll show you with my light. You guys can see I'm right here in the middle. That's where you want to put the tool. Now this is a 19 mil drive and I am going to use that to push the bolt against the pinion and pull the flange off.
this is it. Stinks. Okay. And then right behind here is our leaking seal. Check it out. This is why we have rear axle fluid, or why you have rear axle fluid leaking on the bottom side of your axle housing. So, I'm gonna get set up with the proper tools to remove this seal. I'm gonna show you guys how to pop it out. All right, so now that we got this flange off, we are gonna clean this whole th thing off. And I'm gonna use, again, my Scotch-Brite pad, and I'm gonna clean up this whole ceiling surface all the way around. Just like this, I'm gonna give it a nice wipe down with some brake clean. Yeah. Make sure you get a nice clean ceiling surface. So it looks something like this. See how nice and clean that looks? All right, so we can see that we have some nasty fluid remnants still sitting in there. So I'm gonna take the brake clean. Get all this nasty stuff off. This is heavy. all nice and clean for installation. All right, the part number for your pinion seal is that. Once you get that seal out of the bag, make sure to prep it with some either Vaseline or what I did in my case, I used trans gel and I wanna pack that whole cavity, the back side, where the spring is, and I don't want that spring to pop out of its groove. That's what actually keeps the rubber seal in its position. So I'm gonna show you guys how to install this in, but first, let's get the old one out. All right, so I am using this kind of tool, a seal remover tool, and I don't know exactly how I'm gonna set this up yet, but we may be looking at something sort of like that. I'm gonna try to just get the lip, you know, right on the back side where that spring is. Let's see if I can pop this out. You guys can see right here where it wants to pop through. Okay, that didn't work. Try a different spot. Let's try the bottom. Let's go from bottom to the top. Let's see if I can turn this around again and get down in there a little further. Just gotta keep trying all the way around until you get a solid bite. Or it winds up coming out what looks like in pieces like this one is trying to do. a couple times but you need to find that spot and get it see see the, the spring has popped out that is what you do not want to do when you're installing it this you do not want to fall out there's our old seal you guys already saw it before removing this how it was leaking this is the components that are behind flange but you guys can check that out let me know if you guys have ever had to do your pinion seal in your super duty the new one we're gonna have to find a driver to go all the way around this 
Now, you guys could try to tap that in with a hammer, um, which, you know, a lot of you guys aren't going to have a socket as big as this circumference. Um, but I guess before I go get the tool, and let me try to do it how you guys would do it. I'm going to use a ball peen hammer, and I'm just going to try to rotate, try to go back and forth. tough for you guys. Definitely going to be tough. It's like you need to walk, walk it around just ever so slightly. Okay, I feel like I got it sort of started. If I can just keep Trying to make it uniform all the way across. See, it just popped back out. You guys are really going to need to find a driver or something to go over the whole circumference of this right here. Let's go see if we can find something. All right, so I have my new seal and I found a driver that is not for this, but it is going to go around the whole circumference of our new seal. So I'm going to push that on, I'm going to try to center this as best I can, and I'm going to try to drive this in. Okay, she's going. Let me get this rag out of my hand. Alright, let's, uh, looks like a little more on the top. Okay, it's like little baby, little maybe more seal seat right there. Okay, I like it. I like it. Okay, our seal is fully seated, guys. It's very imperative that you find a tool to drive that all on at once or you're gonna be fighting you know, a side popping out. So the next thing we're gonna do is get this flange back on and good thing that we have the pinion marked. All right, here we go. We're gonna install the flange back on the vehicle and the lines that we had previously made, we are gonna now line back up with the line on the pinion, kind of self-explanatory. So, if you put the triangle in the triangle hole when you were little, I think you can figure this out. Okay, we're clocked right. So what we're gonna do to drive this on just a little further so we can get the thread started, we're gonna use a one and 13 16 socket to drive this pinion flange on just a little more. see we got some of the threads started and we're gonna go for the nut that we already have set up in our socket from removal and we're gonna tighten it until those marks line up all right there it is we're tight the lines are lined up if you need to do your pinion seal at home this would be another way for you to do it if you don't have the special tools tell me if you guys have ever done this before replacing a pinion seal fixing an axle leak doing what you got to do to keep these trucks on the road tell me in the comment sections thanks so much for watching remember to like comment sub share and i'll catch you guys all next time see you.